Any questions on vowels and consonants? On the page number again? 184. Okay. The languages of the world have from 3 to 24 or more different vowel qualities that can be described in terms of vowel height, backness, and rounding. Mm. It's really hard to say, too, um, because we know that the number of vowels is basically infinite. The number of possible vowels is infinite. But what he's saying here is that for a typical language, some languages have just three vowels. And there are a number of languages that have just three vowels. There's one language of the Caucasus where they say you could actually analyze it as having only one vowel, a schwa, and everything else is allophonic. That's kind of extreme, but three is reasonable. And 24 is a language with more vowels. So there is an endless, basically an infinite number of possible vowels, but within a certain language, a language usually won't go over 24. 24 is enough, value, enough vowels for an individual language, according to the languages that we've looked at. So he's not saying that's the only thing possible, but this is basically what we found. In a single language, it will have at least three vowels and maybe as many as 24 within one certain language, one particular language. OK, anything else? Okay, so the explanation is on the next page. About where? Oh, yeah, okay. So, uh, uh. ah, the symbol after the L. You're absolutely right. It's supposed to be a gamma. Absolutely, yes. And I have, I have looked at Gaelic, actually. I've looked at it a bit. I don't know that much about it, but because um, we sang a Gaelic song at Christmas, remember? So that's where I learned that they do actually have that gamma. So you're absolutely right. Very good. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Yeah. There's another typo. Typo on um, page 178. Mm -hmm. In Swedish vowels, um, the word for window pane. Window pane. Window pane. Mm -hmm. yeah. The the phonetic alphabet for the or the phonetic spelling, the phonetic symbols. Yeah, the phonetic symbol for the U should be a U with a line. Uh huh. Yeah, but not two T's. Not two T's. <laughs> Excellent. You can see that that was probably misread. Thank you so much. Very good. I'm so impressed that you have even looked at the table so closely because. In all these years, they didn't fix this. So that's very impressive. Anything else? Typos or otherwise? Yeah. And, and uh, Peter Lanaforget said that the French le should be the, uh, a rounded vowel. Uh, but um, when I listened to my French teacher, French teacher? French teacher, she said uh, she pronounced it like a schwa. It's a rounded. Oh, okay. It really should be a rounded schwa. Because there are, a lot of, there are a lot of rounded vowels in French I may have mentioned before. You can often recognize a French person because of their rounded lips. When they're walking around, their lips are more rounded just because they have so many rounded vowels. That sounds really silly. doesn't sound very politically correct, but it's true. You will, you will often be able to tell a French person. 
Fuoco. Yeah. So le, le livre, le, it should be rounded. So observe some more. Don't just listen, you have to look. And I'm sure you can find lots of videos. Just any old video on YouTube in French. Le, le. It should be rounded. Yep, anybody else? That's it? Thank you so much for pointing out the typos. We will get back to those. You know that there's a third edition, which we didn't get for this year. I have just talked to the Cranes representative, and he said they have an overstock of this book in this edition, which means next year we're still going to be using this edition. Unless, and they're using price to persuade us, because this edition costs around 500 something. Was it 六百多? Okay, close to 700. Actually, originally it was like So it's still a good, it's a good price. So close to 700. Yeah, all right. I, I didn't get the exact price, and I bought this, you can see, quite a long time. No, no, they gave me this one. Yeah. Is it possible to like a book at Amazon? Yes, but usually the price for at which these books are sold in Western countries is very high. Remember that Latifoged is over 70 US dollars. We can check on Amazon. It's very expensive, which is ridiculous. Because it's a thin book, they print it in huge quantities. They do that because it's a money maker. And I think that's really, I can't say quite unethical, but I don't, I don't agree with this practice at all. Because a lot of people, I told you, have stopped using Latifoged because it's gotten too expensive. But this is the book that's making them money, does not cost much to, to produce. So I think that's extremely unfair unwise. They're doing that to subsidize the many books that they publish that don't sell very many copies. Um, as for this one, um, they, there is a third edition, but if you insist on the third edition, because they want to sell off their overstock. So it doesn't make that much of a difference to me. I'm sure the new edition has some nice things that would make it worthwhile. But this one has been fine all these years. We'll probably just continue, not probably, I've already decided. We'll continue using this one next year. But if you really, really want to see the third edition, first of all, you can see a lot of it online. They have a website. And second, if you really want it, you can order it. But it may be rather expensive. OK, anything else? Anything else? That's it. Hand in your work, please. And for next week? OK. Ah, yeah, Dwey, just go, go according to the syllabus. I did check when I did the syllabus. I'm not thinking of it right now, so it's not good to ask me. Better to ask the computer. Yeah. So I was looking at it when I made the syllabus, but I'm not thinking of it now. So definitely follow what's there. Okay, anything else? We're okay. That's it for vowels and consonants. There are a number of web pages on in phonetics too that we haven't covered. So I may be asking you to read some of them yourself. I want you to just go through them and pick out ones that look interesting. This is an assignment. Go through the web pages on phonetics 2 that we haven't covered in class. Some of them are kind of fun. Some of them are review, especially the ones earlier. But there are things, for example, about synthesizing vowels and more things about spectrograms. There's one called white noise, pink noise, orange noise. That one's kind of funny. Um, sorry, wrong number. Frequency ranges of speech and hearing. That's after the missing fundamental. There's one that's really good we probably won't do in class that I highly recommend. And that one is the McGurk effect. The McGurk effect is where your eyes will sometimes give you wrong information and override your ears. And the one about the McGurk effect is number 17. So do that yourself. That one's fun. Number 17. I'll assign that. And the other ones, just kind of have a look at them. Yeah. OK, so after break, we're going to work on chapter 9. OK, that's it. Take your break. We are moving on now to chapter 9. 
And the main things that we need to do in this chapter, first of all, we're going to learn about cardinal vowels, primary and secondary cardinal vowels. That's the first thing. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to look at unusual vowels that we don't have in English. So those are the two main things that we are going to do in this chapter. It's not that long. There's little, very little time left in the semester. We are really going to rush, as can be expected. This happens at the end of the semester in many classes. Mine certainly, but I know in many of my colleagues as well. We're, we're going to go through this really fast. And if I think it's not that important, I may, I may just summarize and we'll jump ahead. OK? So whose turn? Do we know? Good. Thank you very much, Tina. Chapter 9, Vowels and Vowel-like Articulations. In previous chapter, chapters, we saw that there are saw, 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 mm -hmm. we, Not saw, saw. saw. Mm. we saw that, that there are three main aspects. Main. 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 Mm, not mean. You have to go from A to E. May -ye. Main. Yeah. There are, there are three main. No, don't go to the E too soon. You have to start at A. A E. A E. A E. Yeah, just like may made a may. Start with may made a may, and then add another e. May in. Not not mean. May in. There we go. That was a good one. Yep. Three main main aspect of vowel quality. Aspects. Aspects mm -hmm. of vowel quality. One, vowel height, which is inversely proportional to the frequency of the first formant. Two. Backness, which is proportional to the difference. Pro proportional. Proportional. Pro 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 mm -hmm. Proportional to Not the. Po propor proportional. There we go. Good. To the difference between the frequencies of the second and first formants. And three, the degree formants, of. Formants, because we're not done. Formants. Mm -hmm. And three. 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 The degree of lip rounding. Rounding. Lip rounding, mm -hmm. which usually lowers both the second and third and the third formants. This chapter will discuss these three features in greater detail. And detail. We'll detail. Mm -hmm. And we'll also consider this some additional less prominent feature of vowel quality. One word after prominent. Features. Right. Of vowel quality. You read really well. I bet you can feel your progress. You can feel how much better you sound, I bet. Yeah, you sounded really good. <laughs> so this is going over what we're going to start addressing, some of what we're going to address here. So vowel height, backness, lip rounding. We know that's F1, 2, and 3. We're going to talk about those in more detail and then some additional things. Um, some additional differences between vowels that we haven't talked about yet, OK? Feature 4.2 in chapter... Oh, what's the first word? Figure. F, F, not F, F. F. Figure. Figure. Everyone, figure. 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 In American, it's figure. In British, it's figure. Figure in British. <laughs> figure. Figure. Okay. Figure 4.2 in chapter 4 shows the relative auditory qualities of the English vowels and diphthongs. As we mentioned at that time, watch your N as we as we mentioned. Mm -hmm. That's better. At that time, the precise locations of the points in this diagram reflected acoustic measurements. Reflected acoustic. Don't go so high when it's not tonic. I'm getting really picky now. Don't go quite so high when it's not a tonic. Save the higher pitch for the tonic. Reflected acoustic measurements. Right. Not mere auditory impressions. Let's make sure we understand as we go along. So 4.2, let's just go back to 4.2 so we know what he's talking about, otherwise we won't know. Chapter 4 and 4.2. Very good, thank you. And page, I'm sorry, page what? This is not, he's, I thought it was going to be the wrong reference. This is not what he meant. 
It's got to be something that shows formant data. Yeah, they really have to fix those references. All right, so um, it shows the relative auditory qualities of English vowels and diphthongs. That means this one is lower than that one, and that one is more front than that one. Only relative. It doesn't give us absolute data. It only shows that one is either higher or lower or more front or more back. That's really all we get from those. Anna says that we didn't get those just ping ying xiang. How did we get them? Through acoustic measurements. We took spectrograms of those and we got the data. Go on. It is. It is, in fact. It is, in fact, mm -hmm. a format chart similar to that shown in. Slow down. Similar to that shown. Why do we have to pause after that? There's another reason. Um, no, we don't have a preposition. Right. Which is Sangriela. Okay. Similar to that shown in figure. To that shown in figure. Similar, similar to that shown in figure. Shown. Shown. Good. In figure 9.1. 9. 9.1. All right, this time I hope he's got it right. Yes, 9.1. There we go. Next page. One. Some of the acoustic measurements were the format frequencies reported in Chapter A. They were su supplement supplemented. Mm -mm, the first time was right. Supplemented mm -hmm. by measurements. Not me, me. By, by measurements mm -hmm. of the format frequencies of the other vowels and diphthongs, all taken all? from all taken mm -hmm. from published sources. Okay, that's good enough. So look at endnotes at the back of the book if you want to check. Just make sure you can find it. So what he's saying is that all of this was obtained through getting actual acoustic data. We didn't guess. We got these from a real acoustic data. Next. Most phoneticians would agree that Figure 9.1 is a fairly accurate reflection of both the way in which American English vowels have traditionally been described. Described? Described. Mm -hmm. And the way in which listeners perceive the relative auditory qualities. Mm -hmm. During the discussion of this diagram in Chapter 4, you probably made up your own mind as to the extent to which it agrees with your perception of the relative distance between vowels. Between. Between mm -hmm. vowels. Mm -hmm. But remember that if it seems inaccurate, inaccurate to okay. you. Once more, inaccurate. Inaccurate. Can you land the in? Inaccurate. Inaccurate. Good. To you, this may be because your accent is not identical to the form of. To the. To the form of American English. English mm -hmm. represented in the figure. All of you are reading so beautifully now. All of you. Sounds great. So um, you'll find that most people will agree that this figure is pretty accurate based on their own feeling. It's, we got the data by collecting acoustic data from spectrograms, but if you just look at it, most people agree, yes, that, sound, that looks pretty right for English. And if you disagree, it may be because your dialect's a bit different. All right, next is cardinal vowels. And by cardinal, we mean basic. It's, a, it's sort of like basic. The cardinal directions are north, east, south, west. Those are the cardinal directions. Those are the basic directions. And these are the basic vowels. And they have a very special purpose. And they're not actually real vowels in any particular language. So don't be confused by that. You'll find that they're re just reference points that we can use when we want to describe any language, when we want to. Choose symbols for the vowels of any language. We can say, this vowel seems to be closest to this cardinal vowel, so we'll pick this symbol. That's one of the main purposes of the cardinal vowel. So we can find the vowel on a chart. When we're describing something, we can say, well, it's this close to this vowel. And that way, our descriptions can be more precise. Go ahead. Cardinal vowels. When describing the vowels, the vowels that occurred on a particular occasion, 
one may not have access to measurements of the formant frequency of the formant frequencies. Formant frequencies of the formant frequencies. Phoneticians who want to describe the vowels of a certain dialect or of a certain speaker of certain speaker or of a certain don't go too high. That's the thing. You're going high when it's not a tonic. Everything is pretty good now except for non-tonic stresses are too high. Or of a certain speaker mm -hmm. often to re often have to rely on their auditory abilities. Okay, here auditory abilities. Our auditory abilities. This one's like vocal cords, vocal folds. It's not really a compound, but it's dressed like a compound. They're auditory abilities. Anyway, abilities that's a bit Okay? Just like political situation. Okay? They plot the vowels on a vowel chart. On a on a vowel chart mm -hmm. so that anybody familiar with vowel chart charts can see where the points are and can infer the, the quality of the vowels they are describing. They are. They are describing. That's right. So if we have a vowel chart and then we're collecting data on a certain language, we're transcribing the language, we can put the vowel on the vowel chart. So other linguists will just look at it and they know right away about what that sound should be. We have a pretty good idea if you plot it on a vowel space because everybody pretty much agrees on that. Let's go on. For for a vowel chart to be truly interpretable, the vowels on it must be plotted with a reference to certain fixed points. With reference to? With reference to... How many syllables? Reference to... With reference to... With this one reference has schwa illusion. To reference is not wrong, but we usually say it with two. With reference to... With reference to right. certain fixed points. Very good. These points must be known to both the people originally. The people, we're not done yet, so don't go up. The yeah. people originally plotting the vowels. Plotting the vowels. Plotting the Why? vowels. Vowels is repeated. And then plotting is going to contrast with interpret descriptions. Yeah. Go ahead. Originally. Originally plotting the vowels mm -hmm. and the people who are going and the people and the people people can go again and the people people and the people pe who and the people who are going to interpret their descriptions very good the space within a vowel chart represent represents a continuum of possible qualities mm -hmm. continuum continuum not t everyone continuum. Not kung either, it's kun and din dan. Everyone, continuum. continuum. And remember that just about anything you do in scholarship, we like to have categories of things, but most things exist on a continuum. So you may think that fun lay sits down of funda. This is black and this is white and that's red and that's the end. But actually, there's pink and there's gray. So just remember most things are on a continuum. Before you can convey anything by saying that a certain vowel is halfway or a third of the way or a third of the way contrast or a third of the way mm -hmm. between one vowel and another Good. another another right. you must be certain that you and your readers share the same set of auditory reference vowels okay share the same set that's what we stress Share the same set of auditory reference vowels. Share the same set of auditory reference vowels. Share the Not share. Share, share. share uh -huh. the same set of auditory reference vowels. Auditory re not ra auditory reference vowels. Auditory reference re ref re ref reference. There we go. Yep. Vowels. Yes. There are several, 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 several here. So, be jiao dui bi de zuo yang. Yeah, we need to stress it. There are several ways, 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 in which non, non, and zhong yang, non reference vowels, mm? re reference vowels, mm, vowels, vowels mm -hmm. can be provided. All right, we're just talking now about how we can have a set of reference vowels so that everybody knows what our points should be, our landmarks should be. Go on. 
In the first place, we can rely on a fact that a vowel chart shows the limits of possible vowel quality. All right, that's important. This part is important. This is this shows us the limits. This is how far a vowel can go. For example, e I can't go any more front than that. It can't be any higher. It can't be any more front. 已经到极限了 So this space is showing us where the limits are. That's important to know. Thus, a point in the extreme upper left corner of the chart represents a vowel with the highest and most front front quality possible,、mm -hmm. and most front quality possible, and most front quality possible.、Right. If the tongue were moved higher or more forward, a palatal consonant would be produced. All right. So that was the example I just gave you. Try to make the e as high and as front as you can. Everybody, try. E. If you push it further, it's going to turn into a y. E. And it's not a vowel anymore. It is an approximant. Right. Okay. A vowel in the extreme lower right corner. Represents the lowest and most back quality possible. Further movement of the tongue would produce a pharyngeal consonant. A pharyngeal consonant. Pharyngeal consonant. All right, let's make the lowest and most back ah we can make. Ah, and if you push it any further back, you get ah, and that's a consonant. Consonant. Okay. This gives us two fixed reference points. Reference points. Re reference points. E and A,、uh. similarly,、mm? similarly,、mm -mm. uh, similarly, similarly,、right. the the points in the other two, the 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 points in the other two corners of the diagram, represent extreme acoustic qualities, though their articulatory definition is not simple. That's right. So we have two really clear point points of re reference, and we define them articulatorily. Okay, 我们是用 articulation 来做定义 E is the highest and most front vowel we can possibly make without it turning into an approximant, and A is the most back and lowest vowel we can make without it turning into a consonant. So those are pretty straightforward. We also have extreme qualities for U and for A, but it's not quite so simple to define them articulatorily. Go on. This use of a vowel chart is quite satisfactory for the、uh, for the description of vowels. Of that, vowels. Of vowels that are near the corners of the possible vowel area, but it does not provide enough fixed points for the description of other vowels. Good. Recognize,、uh, recognizing this problem, the British phonetician Daniel Jones proposed a series of eight cardinal vowels. Cardinal vowels.、Uh, cardinal vowels,、mm -hmm. evenly spaced around the outside of the possible vowel area, and designed to act as fixed reference points for phoneticians. See Figure 8.2、mm -hmm. and、uh, 9.2.、Mm -hmm. In no case is the quality of a cardinal vowel exactly cardinal the. Cardinal vowel. A cardinal it's vowel. It's not a. It's not a compound. A、okay. cardinal vowel exactly the same as that of an English vowel. All right. Did you take note? None of the cardinal vowels are actual vowels in particular languages. Some languages may have vowels that are very close to some of the cardinal vowels, but they are not designed to be examples of a real vowel in any particular language. They are designed to mark the outer limits of the vowel space of our human ability to produce vowels. It just marks the outer limits, and that way we can say, well, it's so close or so far from. A particular cardinal vowel, and that way we can find it in the vowel space. Okay. It can happen that a particular language may have a vowel. May have a vowel. May have a vowel that is virtually identical to a cardinal vowel. Several of the vowels of a conservative form of conserv not conserv 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 conservative form of Parisian, Parisian? French Parisian French are very similar. All right. So French. The French of Paris is one place where we might find some vowels that are very close to our cardinal vowels. Some of the cardinal vowels, okay? But by definition, the cardinal vowels are arbitrary reference points. Okay, good, Carol.、Yep. And you can take two paragraphs. You can be pretty hot. I think we'll do okay. Not hot. <laughs> I'm reading the word hot. I was going to say fast. <laughs> can be pretty fast. But I was looking right at the word hot, as the aw and hot. You know. <laughs>
So I didn't mean for you to be hot in class. That would be very inappropriate. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, two of the cardinal vowels are defined in articulatory terms. In nar. In nar articulatory mm -hmm. terms. Mm -hmm. Cardinal vowels one is produced. Uh, no, no, S. Cardinal vowel one is produced with the lips spread and the tongue as high and far, f far forward as possible without causing audible Pause friction. Without causing. Without causing audible friction. It is therefore something like the vowel E, but with a more extreme quality. The symbol for it is also E. The symbol for it? The symbol for it is also E. All right, we've already talked about that. So it's very much like E in English and Mandarin, but it's more extreme. So instead of E, E, Fu, E, Er, San, E, it's E. Much more tense, forward, high. Keep going. The other cardinal vowels. Other, other. The other, uh -huh. the other cardinal vowel that is defined in articulatory terms is cardinal vowels five. Mio S. If it's cardinal vowel five. Mm -hmm. This vowel is made with the lips in the neutral in position. The, in, the. in the neutral position. Mm -hmm. Neither spread nor rounded. And with the tongue as low as far back as possible. With the tongue? Uh, with the tongue as low and as far back as possible. Good. Okay, be careful when there are a whole bunch of function words. Often we're not really looking at them. We sort of memorized it, but then they get garbled easily, so you have to kind of keep looking back at the text. And this is important. This vowel is made with the lips in a neutral position. Watch out. That's more important than it looks. Your lips are not particularly spread, nor are they particularly rounded. So cardinal vowel number five, you will find is ah, so it's not aw ah, and it's not ah. Our lips are just fang song. Nothing special with our lips, neither spread nor particularly rounded. So ah, ah. Go ahead. Accordingly, it is something like some forms of the American English vowel ah, as in father, hot, or the British, or the British English vowel or it, as in hot. And that's what I was looking at, yes. <laughs> I was reading ahead. Okay, hot. But the problem with hot is what? It's got rounding, it's got some rounding there. The American English, uh, the American ah, uh, however. 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 That's better. However. 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 Right. However. Mm -hmm. It's not usually made with the tongue as far back as possible. And the British or is not oh, no, not sorry, quite that much. it's oh. not. Yeah. Or hot. Yeah. Hot. Mm -hmm. And the British or usually has a slight has a slight no, lip uh. rounding. Has slight lip rounding. Mm -hmm. The symbol for the cardinal vowel five is ah. All right. So those two are easy to remember. One is e, very extreme, and five is a very extreme ah. Those are easy. Go on. Try to make cardinal vowels one and five in accordance with these descriptions. Remember to have your lips fully spread, spread when saying e. All right, so we do spread the lips for e, but not for a. So e, lie zui, yeah. Make sure your tongue is so close to the roof of it's the. so close. Is so close to the roof of the mouth that you would produce a voiced palatal fricative. Ye? What's that sound? Ye. Ye. Yeah, we want some friction with e. Ye. 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 Uh -huh. If you raised it any higher. Any higher. Any higher. Good. Uh, similarly, when producing ah, uh, make sure the tongue is pulled so far down and back in the mouth that you are almost producing a voiced pharyngeal fricative. Uh, 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 yeah, okay. Not, uh, not to be confused with the glottal stop, which is... Uh. Yeah, question mark with no dot. Uh, it was really good. There's nothing to pick at except you can do a little, be a little smoother. Not to be confused with, instead of not to be confused with, try not to be confused with... Yeah, do it again. <laughs> not to be confused. That was better. Work on smoothing it out, because your reading is so good now. 
Now I'm going to start picking on different details, tinier and tinier, tinier details, okay? Cardinal vowels 2, 3, and 4 are defined as front vowels that form a series of auditorily equidistant. Equidistant. E Equally distant. Equidistant. Equal, I say equidistant. Anyway. Equidistant uh -huh. steps between numbers 1 and 5. As we saw in the previous chapter. Previous chapter. Previous chapter. Mm -hmm. The acoustic defin the, the. the acoustic definition of front vowels is that the distance between formant one, formant one, formant one, and formant two, two is as great as possible. Mm -hmm. We can also specify. Also. We can also mm -hmm. specify in acoustic terms. Can you link? In acoustic mm -hmm. terms. Right. What is meant by auditorily equidistant steps? Mm -hmm. It implies that when these five vowels are plotted on a formant chart of the kind we have been discussing, they will be represented by points that are equal distances apart. There are some complications in this respect that we will discuss later. And they will probably have to do with lip rounding. Okay, your reading is also beautiful. I think you just need to work a little more on z, because most of your s's sound like s. Some of them you're trying to voice them, but work more on voicing s's that should be voiced. Otherwise, very nice reading. Okay? Cardinal vowels 6, and six 7, and 8 are defined as vowels that continue from number 5. Number 5? Five. Number 5, mm -hmm. with the same size steps as in the first part of the series. 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 Everybody, series. Series. They're both E. Series. Series. Uh -huh. Series, but are as back as possible. That is, with as small a distance as possible. Distance. Distance as possible between formants 1 and 2. Good. In order to continue with these same size steps, mm -hmm. The back vowels have to become become not only increasingly not 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 only not only increasingly higher 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 but also increasingly more rounded. All right, this part is also important. The back vowels we want the steps to be equally distant from each other. In order to do that, we're going to have to add rounding because that will increase. Well, that'll make the distance between them about right. It's going to, um, they're going to keep getting higher and we're also going to have more rounding. Okay? As a result, cardinal vowel 8 is in fact the highest, highest, the highest, most back, most rounded possible vowel. Vowel. Even, vowel, even though it is. Vowel, good pause. Pause how we have to stop a long time. Most rounded possible vowel. 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 Mm -hmm. Even though it is not defined in this way. Defined in this way. Defined in this way. Uh, this bianama jong. In this way is a gang jang guo so it's repeated. Even though it is not defined in this way. Even though it is not defined in this way. That's fine, good. Um, so we don't define this vowel, cardinal vowel 8, in this way. It happens to have these. Features, it is the most, it is what? The highest, most back, and most rounded possible vowel. That's not the way we define it. We define things according to the book. And we define two vowels auditorily. They are E and A. Ah. For U, it happens to have the features we describe, but that is not the definition that we use. Can we try to make a cardinal U? Everybody try. As back, as high, and as rounded as possible. Ooh, ooh. Okay, good. The symbols. Not sim. Sim. sim, sim right. The symbols hmm? for sim. Symbols. Right. The symbols. Hmm? <laughs> That's habit. I mean, that is habit. Habit is very, very, very powerful. So you have to stop and think. And I want to share a method that I told my freshman English students today that I haven't done with this class so much, and you're more advanced anyway. But that is when you're reading a new sentence and you find that you don't have time to think of all of the compound noun stresses and all of the pauses due to phrasing and all of the stop at stops. There are too many things to think about, so you keep making mistakes. Then 
the teacher corrects you, and then you read it again. Gu zi lo, nega shi bi, right? You get this one right, and then you get the other ones wrong because of habit, right? The way you avoid that is you read the sentence in your head. 就心里边那个声音，用心里边的声音来念。Read the sentence in your head until you've checked it carefully and you've fixed all of the problems that you know of. All of the compound stresses,、uh, stresses are correct. All of the stop at stops, are, stops at stops are there. All of the tonic stresses are there, etc. All of them are in there. When you hear your voice in your head, and then you look at the sentence, you think, "I can't think of anything else I'm going to get picked on." Okay, 我已经找不出我还会被挑的地方 Then you hear your voice reading the whole sentence correctly, and then you say it with sound. Did you all understand my description? The way this happened, I told this story this morning. I keep telling you about my British English teacher, right? Well, he is a brilliant language learner. He's just really good at language learning. I think I mentioned he learned Chinese in two years by himself, basically. 他就自修两年，他就可以看中文小说 I gave him I gave him a translation of a novel by Cun Shang Cun Shu, and he he got through it. He didn't check every single word, but he finished the novel after two years studying by himself. So he's really really good. We were out touring in Taipei. We went to a Gu Zai, and they had a plate that was explaining Ah, this is Gu Zai is 怎样怎样 And he started reading the characters really choppily. Because he every word he has to remember the meaning, the meaning. So it was very, very choppy. And then you know, I said, just stop. I said, read the whole thing in your head. Read it until you remember all of the pronunciations. You don't have to think about them, and you can just read the whole sentence in 一口气 He said, "Okay." So he stared at it, and then he read it perfectly. And he said, "Oh, that works really well." You know, <laughs> he's a he's a really brilliant language learner, and he hadn't thought of that before, and it worked perfectly for him. This morning in freshman English, students were reading, making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Okay, 你认为我烦？那那学生呢？啊，还有还有他同学，啊，他就已经烦到受不了了。But I wasn't going to let them go until they got it all right, and I already told her everything that needed to be fixed. I even wrote it on the board, and she still got it wrong because she was. It was the the 固执失笔的问题，那不动漏习。She would fix the thing I told her and then forget it, forget everything else. So I said, just everybody, be quiet now. We're going to let her read the sentence to herself in her head without her mouth. She went over the whole sentence, then she read it aloud, and she got it nearly perfect. This person who had gotten corrected over and over and over again, had she just hung out, she didn't complain, she didn't get angry, she didn't get impatient, she just kept getting corrected over and over again. And so I said, "I'm sorry, but we're going to keep repeating it until you get it right." When she used that method, she heard herself say the whole sentence. She had everything marked in her text. Then she read it beautifully. Write this down, or don't forget it. This is another application of the echo method. So instead of just Battling it word by word and constantly making mistakes. Hear the whole thing in your head first, then say it, and you'll probably get it perfect. Perfect. There is another area of training where they teach you the same skill. Can you think what it might be? Something that requires you to hear something in your head first. Translation, actually, that's basically what we're doing too. Translation is another place you can use it. Absolutely, it's not what I was thinking of. A rather different thing from what we're doing. That too. There you go. You got it. Exactly, because if you make a mistake and then you play it right away without thinking very much, what happens? You're going to make the mistake again, and after you make the same mistake four times, what happens? It's deeply impressed in your mind. You have reinforced that mistake very deeply by the time you've made the mistake four times. It's going to be even harder to fix. So as soon as you as soon as you discover the mistake, what should you do? Stop and what? Think through the whole thing. Hear it in your head, and then imagine your fingers. If it's piano, for example. Imagine the whole thing in your head, getting it right, and when you're sure, then play it and stop if you feel it going wrong, so you don't make the same mistake again because you will just keep on reinforcing the wrong way. 
So everybody, this method works almost like magic. You know, in Dai Yuen, you can imagine how frustrated everybody is when one person, especially Amy, she was the one who was complaining last semester more than once. These people don't come prepared and we waste all this class time. I told the class, I'm sorry, you're going to have to put up with this until we get it right. In that situation, she did it almost perfectly. It really, really, really works. I'm not kidding. Okay? So remember this application of the echo method. When you're having trouble, listen to yourself in your head. When you're ready, then read. We will give you time if you need it. Okay, back to what we're doing. The symbols, symbols for cardinal vowels, two, three, and four, are A, A, and A, respectively. The symbols for cardinal vowels, seven, six, seven, and eight, are eight. Eight mm -hmm. are R uh, O U. Good. Most of these vowels. These be on the Most of these vowels have qualities something that those of the English vowels we have been symbolizing. It sounded a little funny. Just read it again. Most of these vowels. Most of these vowels mm -hmm. have qualities something that those of something 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 that huh? like. Yeah, <laughs> sounds something like those of the those those of the of the English of the English vowels English vowels English vowels we have been symbolizing in a similar way mm -hmm. in uh, in uh, not in a, in in, uh, in uh, there we go similar way similar similar right not similar symbols similar should be symbols similar in a okay. In accordance, in, 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 in accordance with the principles of the, I, of the, the IPA. IPA? The IPA. IPA. Use a Y I, for a linking sound. IPA. Right. This, the sim, symbols mm -hmm. chosen for most of the, the English vowels are those of the nearest cardinal vowels. So that's how we pick the symbols that we use for English. Those were the symbols closest to the cardinal vowel, or the ones most similar to a certain cardinal vowel, and we just use the symbol of the cardinal vowel. Okay. The major exception is exception. Exception. Look at my mouth. Exception, not exception. 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 Don't round. Exception. Exception. There. Everyone, exception. Exception. Don't round the sh. There's too much rounding in Taiwan normally. Okay is the vowel in fat, which fol following the tradition of many English-speaking phon phoneticians has been symbolized by a rather than by, by mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. rather than a. It's not a, it's an chuan the an, a, a, okay, right. Some dictionaries actually do use that symbol though, I think. All right, let's see if we can I'm going to read over this one because it's not that crucial. The cardinal vowel system has been extensively used by phoneticians in the description of a wide variety of languages. There are, however, a number of difficulties. First, as Daniel Jones said in an outline of English phonetics, that's from 1957, the values of the cardinal vowels cannot be learned from written descriptions. They should be learned by oral instruction from a teacher who knows them. Okay, I'm giving you another assignment. Uh, uh, of, uh, I'm giving you another web page assignment. And the last one I gave you was what? Which is about McGurk. Capital M C and then G, capital G U R K. McGurk, the McGurk effect. All right, the other one I want to give you now is I want you to listen to the cardinal vowels. And that one is number 24. Number 24 has three links. Use the first two. There's Daniel Jones and Peter Latifoget's cardinal vowels. Actually, they're pretty much the same. And there's a lot of in information there. There's Daniel Jones' voice uh, recorded by, he him, by him himself. And that's kind of interesting. Mm. The cardinal vowels sound a little bit odder than you might expect. How's our time? Um, maybe I should play them in class anyway so we kind of get a start on this. Number one. E Okay, just go through them. Each one has a separate sound file. Number two. E. All right, look at the 
Look at the two biao on uh, 221. Next. Number three. Uh, yeah, go ahead and repeat. Number four. Number four. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, five. Number five. Oh. Uh, and you can hear a little rounding there, can't you? Six. Number six. Oh. Number seven. Oh. Number eight. All right, that's how they sound. And, okay, so we finished that paragraph. Our last reader was Yumi, right? All right? It was for this reason that we did not suggest you try to produce a complete series of series, series of cardinal vowels immediately after reading the descriptions given above. Okay, that's fine. Okay, listen to the recordings. I want you all to listen to the cardinal vowel recordings yourself at home. Try to find someone who can listen critically to your imitations of them. Uh, you probably have a better ear than almost anybody you can find, but you can try that. With a good assistant, it is possible to learn to produce them with a fair degree of accuracy. I don't think you'll have any problems. You sounded really good just imitating now. Um, another thing is, we're going to jump ahead a bit. These are not the only cardinal vowels. These are the primary cardinal vowels. Jump ahead, I also want you to listen to the secondary cardinal vowels, and you can see them in the figure on page 223. So jump ahead to secondary. We're going to go through material, the material very, very fast on Monday. And they're going to have rounding that is opposite of the primary vowels, primary, primary cardinal vowels. So that means that e, a, e, a, they are going to become u, 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 a, and then the back ones, what's going to happen to those? They'll be unrounded. So we have a, a, a. Uh, sorry, uh, and then uh. All right, so listen to all of those on the recordings. My secondary ones were not that wonderful. I want you to listen to the recordings to get them right. Um, please read ahead in the text through cardinal vowels up until page to the end of 223. Read that ahead of time. We're not going to read it in class. I may just uh, summarize it very, very quickly. But there's not that much more information. You know, just read it yourself. This is an assignment, a reading assignment. Read up to the bottom of page 223. We're going to, I'll just summarize it really quickly in class. And then we're going to start on 224 and talk about vowels in other accents of English, advanced tongue root, rhoticized vowels, nasalization, summary of vowel quality, semivowels. Secondary articulatory gestures, those are important on page 234. And then we'll be up to the exercises. We're going to finish this chapter in like two more classes. That will be it. It's not that big of a deal. You already know what's going on with the cardinal vowels. Read the rest yourself, there will be no problem. And then some things about other accents of English. And the secondary vowel uh, qualities, these are really important. Secondary articulatory gestures. Make sure you know how to use those. We need to also understand what semivowels are. Nasalization, bihua, we've already talked about, like ea and ea, right? Rhoticized vowels, we've also talked about. Advanced tongue root on 228, you'll have to know what that is. It's sometimes controversial because people confuse what it actually means. And you need to know that stuff. We'll finish it in one or two more classes. Then we'll spend the rest of the time on 10. And 11 is up to you. And then we will finish the book and be done with the class. <laughs> okay? Any questions? That's it. We will see you next Monday.